It seems obvious, the more customers you bill out, the more money you make, but it's not always that simple. Most guys I talk to have more work than they can handle, and they're working every day, but at the end of the month, they have nothing left. The hardest lesson that I learned was that success is just failing over and over until you finally get it right. When you start charging more in your business, everything finally starts working together, not against each other. What's up, Joel? Hey, Jared, how's it going? <laughs> no, I'm doing good, how are you? Uh, doing so that good. <laughs> so that good, man. <laughs> You're like that guy that's like oh, so dude. cool. Man, I don't know how to add that into the next sentence I was thinking. We just realized that mm. Joel says that a lot. Yeah, so now we're gonna try to get into the natural flow of things and see how many times they say that. So if you can count how many times Joel says that in this podcast. Jared's gonna whittle you a spoon. Sure, I'll whittle you a spoon. Have you whittled any spoons recently? No, just the one. Dude, how are you <clears throat> gonna beat out all the guys in the old folks home if I, you're not I'll practicing? I'll work on that, you know? I got. I feel like I got a while, <laughs> while to practice, so. See, that's what everybody thinks. They like, how good do I gotta off. be to, you know, I don't know. And this is about personal transformation, more so than it is about you beating out other old guys. Totally. Yeah. I'm going to buy some whittling spoons. Wait. That's whittling knives. I was going to say, I was like, it's the purpose to I saw the look on you. I saw the look on your face, <laughs> and then my brain started like going, ah. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to replay what you said. Yeah. Like, I must have said something weird there. I must have said something really dumb, because Jewel has a look on his face like, yeah. I'm, like I'm an idiot. <laughs> yeah, Jared, you should whittle. You're not supposed to just buy the spoons. You're supposed to actually whittle them yourself. Oh, dang. That's how that works? Yeah. Uh, I can recommend you a book. I'll recommend it to you off the air. Okay, thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Got my Xbox in today. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> so next podcast, I'll be divorced. Yeah, because Jared will just have played Xbox from the minute this podcast ends until who knows when. Dude, I kid you not. I So I've had very few gaming consoles in my life. I've never owned an Xbox. Oh, wow. <clears throat> I did own a PlayStation something mm -hmm. one time. I, would have, I had a Nintendo 64 right. when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. What's funny is I bought a Nintendo 64, and my brother bought a guitar, oh, like an electric guitar. And he was the video game nerd, and I was the one who was into music. Wait, wait. Did this happen like at the same time? Like You guys separately went out? We separately bought the things that each other was actually interested in? Yeah. Weird. And then we traded. <laughs> like a week later, he like, was you, like, this guitar, like playing guitar is hard. And you're like, playing N64 is stupid. Yeah. And I'd been playing bass for like a few, like uh, probably quite a few, yeah, quite a few years. Yeah. I started when I was really young. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, we traded. That's so funny. It was funny. I never knew that. Yeah. Hmm. So I owned it for a short period of time. This is the, I think I had a PlayStation when me and my wife were first married. Mm. And I remember we we were in between apartments. We moved in with her parents. Mm -hmm. and it was right when Tony Hawk American Wasteland came out. Mm. <clears throat> and I'm I'm not a very conversational guy, mm -hmm. as you may know. I, I've never noticed. So, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate the... I got your back, man. I got your back. Appreciate you know? that. <clears throat> I'm just trying to stay employed. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so I would go hide in my room and literally for oh, like... At your, parent, or at your uh, in-law's house? Yeah. So literally for like a week straight. After work, I went home. And I played Tony Hawk, and then all weekend I played Tony Hawk until I beat the game, and then I had to go talk to people. Yeah, now it's going to be like that all over again for your wife. Dude, so I'm excited. I can't, like, that was one of my favorite video games ever. Yeah. And I'm stoked to download it again. Yeah. It'll be fun. Hmm. Hopefully it's as cool as I remember. Yeah, um, it definitely will be, 100%. 100%? 100%. percent <laughs> It definitely doubt. will be, without a doubt. <laughs> You'll not play it for 45 minutes and go, damn, this isn't as cool as I thought it was. That's exactly what's going to happen. And then that stupid Xbox is just going to sit there. Yep, it's going to sit there forever. Collect dust. Yep. And I'll never use it. Yep. Yep. And your wife's going to be <laughs> dodging a bullet on that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or you'll play it really late and then <clears throat> running tomorrow, you're going to be very cranky and tired. I'm not going running tomorrow. Yes, you're going to run no, tomorrow. I'm playing, Why, I'm playing Xbox, Why wouldn't you go running dude? tomorrow? Oh, I'm playing dude. Xbox. I'm going to have Christelle assassinate that thing. <laughs> I texted you this morning. You did, told not, you. you did not text me this morning. I texted you this morning. Nope. I said, Xbox is coming in today. No, you didn't. No running for you me did, tomorrow. You did not text I'll be me busy. this morning. That's a, that's a bold-faced lie. Dude, I happen to have my phone right here. If you if you pull that text up, I would <clears> be very surprised. I'm, you're about to get proven wrong. 
Maybe. Look at this. Look at the last two. My Xbox is over, so no running for me tomorrow. Dude, I didn't even see that come through. I know. You don't even pay attention to me anymore, Joel. <laughs> Where would that even come through? Oh, my gosh. How did I even clear that? You know what probably happened? Huh. Oh, I was working out at that time. That's why. Yep. Yeah. I was doing man stuff. You ignored me. Yeah, I did, because I was doing really cool, important stuff. Hey, <clears throat> on another topic, before we get into our topic here, uh, today we're going to talk about how to make more money, like how to make more money with your plumbing business. We're going to give you, a, we're going to run through some ideas on exactly the things you can do to mm. increase your income, increase your profitability today. Um, but before we do, mm. I got my testosterone tested. Yep. As you know. Yep. Dude, I got, <clears throat> so I was on, they gave me this cream, mm-hmm. right? That you have to rub down under mm-hmm. twice a day. I got your kneecap, right? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> we'll call that down under. <laughs> um, yeah. I got, okay, cool. <clears throat> my just, t- just try to keep it, you know, kid safe. Dude, my testosterone was super low, which is probably why I've always been so skinny. I wonder if it's been like that my whole life mm. or if uh, it's just gotten lower as an adult. I wonder. Yeah, I don't, yeah. My anyway. guess is it just gets lower as as you got older would be See, my guess. That didn't, like, if you look at, historically, that didn't used to happen. Anyway, yeah, this is a whole nother topic. It's a different podcast. So I got a new doctor. Mm-hmm. A real doctor. Well, I, well, kind of. The other guy was just hawking you cream from his coat on the street, telling you to <laughs> rub it on your knees. They're all real doctors. Just the doctor I was using, the blood tests they did, they tested like three things. Mm. This new guy tests like a much wider array of things. Yeah. Did which, you have to go into like the blood test clinic to do it? Um, he hasn't done one yet oh, because okay, gotcha. he just looked at the other blood test and he was like, yeah, I can get you on this, but then we're going to get you on it. And then three months, we're going to do a much more extensive blood Interesting. test. Interesting. Okay. Which I like better because if you're putting something in your body, you need to know how it's affecting the rest of your body, right? Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> so that's cool. But what he said is, hey, the cream doesn't work, so we're going to get you on huh. injectables. So... Did you see my needles? Mm-mm. Dude, I feel like a freaking drug dealer. Yeah, you just showed me that you had like, or you told me that you had like one inch long needles or whatever. Yeah, one inch long needles. You got to stick it in your butt cheek. So <laughs> I'm supposed to do that twice a week. Twice a week. <clears throat> That's not too bad. Twice a week. No. So I'm looking at so this. you're doing like six times a week then, right? Like a man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just double up. Yeah, why Plus not? Plus the cream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, I, I dude, don't understand. What could go wrong? I'm going to be huge. You're going to be jacked. <laughs> <laughs> just tell your doctor. I'm just I'm trying to get jacked, boss. Yeah, like, I'm just going to work out one arm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that you can be a whole other <laughs> realm of influencer that way. Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> one arm Jared. One arm. <laughs> We come up with the dumbest stuff. Uh, okay, so I'm I looking at this awesome, needle, right? Probably. It's an inch long. Yeah. It's bigger than I thought. Mm-hmm. I don't like needles to mm-hmm. begin with. Uh, so I have this. I And seriously, you feel like a drug dealer. For some reason, having a vial that you put your syringe in mm-hmm. and flip it upside down and pull out a certain milligrams of stuff, mm-hmm. and you got it, and you hold it upside down, and you squeeze the air out until mm-hmm. it has a little drip of liquid at the top, mm-hmm. and then you stab it in your butt and Dude. squeeze it in there. Whew. feel a little bit, <clears throat> feels wrong. Huh. Anyway, so I, I stuck that needle, just hit my, barely hit my skin with it, and I was like, <laughs> no way. <laughs> this is not going to happen. Like, yeah. I felt the poke, you know? Yeah, yeah, and you're like, I can't and go I'm like, further than this. This, this whole thing has got to get in my butt. <laughs> not in my butt but in my butt cheek I guess we gotta clarify yeah, was about, <laughs> that sounded really bad Costin's about to clip that part and then that's about to hit a million views <laughs> <laughs> that'd be really funny the that's secrets what I'm known of wealthy for. plumber plumbing business <clears throat> um, so I'm like dude there's no way so then I try it again and I poke my butt and I and I go like just a little bit further and I'm like, oh, it's not so bad. And I look down and it's all the way in. Oh, Didn't but, even notice. Oh, because it, yeah, probably because the needle's made to do that. Yeah. Like, how do you poke a one inch needle in your butt cheek and it, you don't, you can barely feel it. Is that, did you think about that? Like for the rest of the evening, like that thought was just in your Dude, head? I've been thinking about it all, all day to day. <laughs> and, <like>. and everybody <laughs> listening, like this has come up because it's just been on Jared's mind. He just needs to talk about it. Yes. Yep. <laughs> so much. are you feeling stronger? <laughs> are you feeling hairier? Or this what? is the only time I talk to anybody. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's pretty I don't, much true. I don't leave my house. I know. Yeah. 
Yeah, except for we have to get a haircut. Thank haircut. God for that. Thank God for that. Chase doesn't know the service he's providing to humanity by getting Jared outside of his house. Now yeah. he's got an Xbox. He's never leaving now. <laughs> I'm never leaving now. He's probably gonna try to call Chase into his house. Dude, that'd be a that'd be awesome. Yeah, that'd be super cool. That's what Mr. Homozy does. Does he? Yeah. Yeah, that's the way to go. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna get jacked here shortly. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Soon you'll see Jared on the podcast in like tank tops, you know. Yeah, I'll be like, Bruh. lift. There'll be like kettlebells around and stuff. I'll have acne all over my face. <laughs> yeah, I'm right. Bald. That's some weird stuff going on. <laughs> oh my god, I'm ready. Oh. If that happens, that's how you know I did use the cream <laughs> and double yeah. up on my injections. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Well. Yeah, man. I. I feel like that we've almost talked about this before way back in the day. That's what I was just thinking of right there. We almost did, and then we we never did. Yeah. And I really had to bring it up. Yeah. I mean, it <clears> comes... <throat> I mean, having your hormones tested, I think, is important because probably everybody listening to this is probably low on something. So it's a major percentage of males that are low nowadays. Yeah. Probably, it, yeah. Diet or what? Like, what's the thing there? Um... From what I know, it's it's toxins in your environment. So, mm -hmm. and mainly like uh, phthalates in your like anything you put on your body, like lotion mm -hmm. or shampoo or shaving cream or any of that mm -hmm. that's got phthalates in it. Mm -hmm. um, and then what it does is it raises your estrogen levels, lowers mm -hmm. your testosterone levels. So mm -hmm. men are walking around with too much estrogen and sure. not enough testosterone. So mm -hmm. we're turning into women. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah. Um, and plastics. Mm. So drink it out of eating off plastic stuff, mm -hmm. drinking, you know, out of plastic cups, mm -hmm. um, plastic water bottles, those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And even the even the like the the BPA free stuff. Sure, sure. It's uh, BPA th free. So mm -hmm. that's one phthalate that they took out. They just gotcha. throw another okay. phthalate in there. Yeah, gotcha. To do, so you're still yeah. getting phthalates, just not BPA. Yeah, gotcha. So it's <clears> a little <throat> bit misleading. Uh, yeah, pretty yeah. misleading. Yeah. How much? How much is like thinking about your health? How much does that factor into you making more money with your plumbing business? I think a lot. I really do. Like, did you notice like a time in your life where you considered your health more seriously? And then did you notice like, oh, I can perform better or worse? Or like, did you have that moment? Yeah, it was long before I started my business. So it was, it was, my wife had really bad eczema. She always has. Mm -hmm. um, we got married. We, I started, I never really was like, I never really thought anything of food as a kid. It was just, sure. you eat when you're hungry and yeah. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. My mom makes dinner and it wasn't very good. And so I go eat a bunch of snacks afterwards, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. wait, that's what my kids do. Wait a second. <clears throat> yeah. And it, I didn't really think about like health and all that mm. and, and what you eat it impacts your body, right? Isn't that kind of weird where it's like there's a disconnect between like the things we put in our body and the performance we get out of our body? Yeah. Super weird. It's very strange. But so, like, with me, even as a kid, like, I didn't. I didn't even have a, I didn't have, I'll call it a love for food. Sure. Okay. So you know how some people, they just like, they oh, love yeah. certain types of food. Yeah. That's me now. I love certain <laughs> types of food. And I, that developed, I went to work and I worked with this guy, Jason Pasillas, who ended mm -hmm. up being my um, business partner. Mm -hmm. Super fun guy to work with. Mm -hmm. Dude, he loved food. Mm -hmm. Mexican guy. He's mm -hmm. like half Mexican. Mm -hmm. um, loved food. And he would just talk about food all day long. That was like his go-to, like, oh, dude. in the conversation, yeah. brings up food. Yeah, and mm -hmm. then he would start taking, like, we'd go to this restaurant for lunch. He'd be like, dude, you got to try this. It's so good. And I'd right. eat it, and I'd be like, dang, that was, that was really good. Second. That's better than the peanut butter <clears throat> jelly I've been eating. Well, I don't know about that, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. <clears throat> but um, so I developed this, like, love for food, right? Mm -hmm. And then it turned into, like, a love for, like, then I was like, you know what? Like, you mix like peanut M and M's mm. and a honey bun and a Mountain Dew together. Oh god, dude, that's a good snack. <laughs> yeah, that's a great snack. So like, this guy would also stop by the gas station every day and just load up on junk. Yeah. And so I started working with him and started hanging out with him, and we'd stop at the gas station. And he would get junk, and I didn't think anything of it. I just mm -hmm. started getting junk food. So 
I started buying those big burritos, the bomb. Yeah. You know the bomb? Yeah. yeah. We started calling them the ass bomb. Yeah. That's <laughs> because more, more aptly named. Because that's yeah. what they are. Yep. Anyway, so eating terribly, spending like $700 a month at the gas station. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> and then my wife's having these health problems, and she went mm-hmm. and saw a holistic doctor. Because mm-hmm. none of the doctors could fix her e- eczema. True. They would just give her a steroid cream. Yeah, sure. So basically, eczema pops up, you put steroid cream on it, and then it goes away, yep. but it leaves you with a white spot on your skin because yeah. it takes the pigment out of your skin. Oh, yeah. Um, and so it was it was lame, and it was getting worse. Sure. So it was getting more of a pain to like put the cream on and yeah. all that kind of stuff. And um, one of the guys her dad was working with was seeing a holistic doctor. Mm-hmm. And he was like, maybe you should go check out this doctor. Mm -hmm. So she went there and the doctor was like, yeah, you probably have some, you know, there's a reason you have eczema. We just Mm -hmm. have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And started getting her eating healthier, basically. Mm. Um, At the exact same time, one of our friends had Crohn's disease. Sure. And he he read a book called The Maker's Diet. Mm -hmm. Really good book. Uh, Basically just laying out like, hey, we were created by... Mm -hmm. God, which is what I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and he created us to eat certain things mm. and not eat unnatural things, right? Mm, sure. Um, and the kind of the whole book is based on like, hey, you just need to eat like a whole food diet. Yeah. So like not processed foods? Yeah. No yeah. processed foods. And and really it pulls from like, okay, um, and I don't know where this is in the Bible. I can't remember right now, but Basically, he gave the Jewish people a certain way to eat. Sure. And that there was a reason behind that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think it's just to separate them out Mm -hmm. for them to be different from the rest of humanity. Mm -hmm. But he said his idea was like, yeah, that's true. But he also gave them these specific guidelines around how they should eat and Mm -hmm. live to keep them healthy and strong. Mm, So they were healthier and stronger than most individuals of their day. Mm Mm-hmm. So it was an interesting book. <clears throat> anyway, the guy in the book had Crohn's disease, completely healed himself mm. of Crohn's disease, mm-hmm. wrote this book. Mm. Um, so we read that book around the same time, and ever since then, it's put us on a different path of really identifying, okay, what I put in my body yeah. has a big effect on the way I feel. Mm-hmm. And since then, we started eating healthier. And then it's just compounded and compounded and compounded and changed as we've you know, learned more and gotten yeah. older. And yeah. when you're young, you can get away with a lot more. Yeah. And I'm realizing now at 38. Yeah, however old you are. Who knows? Going on 39. My brother's going to be 40 this year. That's oh, crazy, dang. dude. Um, at 30, <laughs> so 38, 39, a little different. hmm Yeah. Like, I used to get away with a lot because I ate pretty healthy. Sure. But I also ran a ton. Yeah. Yeah, so you could, so even if you're <clears> like, that level of activity... You could probably eat, even if you didn't eat as healthy, Yeah, you would just take care of that with your activity. Yes. Yep. I would feel really good yeah. regardless of, and I ate pretty healthy, Yeah, but I would never, like I was burning tons of calories yeah. um, in pretty decent shape, running shape. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I hurt my ankle and got ankle surgery and mm-hmm. then I broke my leg, there's mm-hmm. like this three-year span where I couldn't run. Mm-hmm. And then, and now everything's just different, you know, yeah. getting older, yeah. got old injuries, yeah. having to change my workouts a little more, yeah. dial in the way I eat a little more, start paying attention to my hormones, yeah. those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. I think like taking, <clears throat> understanding what we put into our body and how it affects our output is kind of always the last thing we think about, mm-hmm. which is, which is funny to me because it's like the most obvious thing. Yeah. Like what kind of gas you put in your vehicle is going to dictate what you get out of it. And a lot of the times we're, we're not even well, putting gasoline and we're putting yeah. in diesel. That's really the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Because like eating processed foods is the easiest thing to do, but it's mm-hmm. super bad for you. Well, I mean, even just outside of food, like mm. when I turned 21, I would go home and, you know, I would eat a, I would eat a box of Cheez-Its and drink a bunch of beer and then go to bed late and try to wake up early. Yeah. And I'd feel like crap the next day. Yep. So, like, if you're a business owner and mm. you're trying to grow a business and sink your, like, it takes a lot of brain power. It takes a lot yeah. of energy. It's a lot of willpower <clears throat> and discipline and, like, And discipline focus. and focus. And if you, 
if you're lacking discipline at home, it's going to show in your business. Yeah, there isn't like, there isn't this reality of like, well, I can go to work and do work stuff and then come home and like ease off the gas. Yep. Because it's like both things are connected because they're both still you. You still Connection. need to fuel yourself to perform in both avenues well. Yep. And I mean, food is super important. Sleep is really important. Yep. Um, identifying stupid things that you're doing in your life and stop, like stop doing the stupid things. Yeah. So this kind of tails into our conversation really well. I mean, we could even say like, number one thing you can do to make more money in your plumbing business is just to get your at-home life together. Yeah. Um, mm. Show discipline in, in your own life. And so whenever we're coaching people who are just, you know, they're coming into owning a business mm. and they're wanting to grow their business, one of the things I always tell them is, because part of like, if you go grab our playbook, by the way, you can go to www.wealthyplumber.com slash playbook. You can grab our playbook um, it's in the description if you're watching on YouTube. But in this playbook right here, you can go grab our hourly rate calculator. And part of filling out that hourly rate calculator, we want you to put in an owner compensation. Mm. So it's like, <clears throat> okay, the owner of the business has to get paid. Right. And that's an expense to the business. And profit is after the everybody gets paid, including the owner, right? right? So, <clears throat> and that can be a hard number to come up with for some people. Oh, like what they want to pay themselves? Yeah, some people mm -hmm. want to put, you know, way too little. Yeah. They want to pay themselves like bottom, bottom dollar. Yeah. Um, some people want to like fluff it way too high. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I what we tell everybody is like, hey, what you should do is come up with a personal budget. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, this is how much I actually need to live off of. Mm -hmm. Like I can actually sustain myself on this budget and then develop the discipline to mm -hmm. live off of that budget. Sure. Because if you don't have the discipline to live off that budget, when you start making millions of dollars in your plumbing business, mm -hmm. you're not going to have the discipline to do well with that. Yeah. And, it, and even before that, as your plumbing business starts to make money mm. and your bank account balance starts to build, mm. You have to have the discipline to use it wisely for your business mm -hmm. and to use it wisely to grow your business even more. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that discipline, you it's gonna be really tough, right? Yeah, because like what's gonna <clears throat> if you don't have that discipline, like what's gonna end up happening? Like, like if you don't have that discipline, what ends up happening is <clears throat> well, number one, so like you should develop that budget and then mm -hmm. set that as your owner pay and then set up your paychecks. Mm. So that they're just regular paychecks, yeah, just sure. like any other employee. Mm -hmm. You get a paycheck, mm -hmm. and you come to work, and your job is to grow the business, yeah. right? Sure. You yeah, get sure. a regular paycheck mm -hmm. to run and grow the business, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and then anything the business makes is not yours. Right, yeah. It's, yeah, it's the, yeah okay. Gotcha. It's there to further the business. Mm -hmm. If you have leftover and there's no extra money needed to further the business, mm -hmm. then you can take that home, mm. right? So what ends up happening if you can't live off, mm. if you can't discipline yourself to live off of an income that you're getting paid, then you're going to end up with extra money for the business and you're going to want to take it home and spend it on yourself. Yeah, gotcha. Like not even purposefully. Just because there's extra money and you're excited and you want to buy that thing. It's and, not even that. Mm. You're probably going to be mm, sure. in debt or mm -hmm. you bought this stupid thing you shouldn't have bought, mm -hmm. or you need the money for this other thing mm. because you made decisions and lived beyond your means instead mm -hmm. of living within your means. Mm -hmm. And now you have to take money that you could spend on growing your business, creating more income for yourself, mm -hmm. and you have to spend it on yourself. Mm. So Sure, yeah, I understand. Yeah, and if you, <clears throat> if you live within your means, I think I watched this on a... Hormozy video. Mm. Um, if you can live within your means, it's, ah, let's put it this way, not just within your means. If you always live off less than you make mm -hmm. at all times, it's ultimate freedom. Right. Because you're never, you never have to make decisions based mm. off just making more money. Right. You can make decisions based on what's the best for the long-term future. Yeah. Right? Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, let me tack a thought onto that. I think it's important to help identify what that long-term future is uh -huh. in developing that discipline. Because if, yeah. cause what can happen is you're like, okay, well, this is how much money, this is my budget, right? Uh -huh. 
And it's important for me to stick to this budget so that I can then have profit to reinvest into my business instead of just pay off the mistakes I make. Yep. <clears throat> but I think the key to that is believing that like, well, I need to grow this business. Oh yeah. Because it seems like sometimes maybe guys don't have that clear vision of like what the business should be or what it could look like. Yeah. And so they're like, oh, well, I made extra money. I've kind of <clears throat> like, I have a business, so I might as well, you know, maybe buy that truck and then like write it off through the business. Yeah. They're like there's a justifying equation that's starting to happen here. Yeah. Especially when you own, like I've talked to guys who are like, well, you know, <clears throat> got my truck on the books. I got this rental on the books. And like, that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily wrong. Right. Unless it's stopping you from doing what you really want to do with your business. Like, yeah, like it kind of just turns into a distraction <clears throat> or it's just going to delay you from getting to the thing that you actually want to get to. Yeah, I see people, they they will spend a lot of time and attention on trying to cut their tax bill mm. and they will neglect trying to just make more money. Yeah. Whereas, and they, they don't realize their business is a money-making machine. Like yeah. They can make a lot of money with their business. Instead, they're going and buying rentals or new trucks to get their right. tax bill down. And then all they're doing is like making stuff more complicated. Yeah. And then now they have a truck payment. Now they have a rental payment. Mm -hmm. Maybe the rental doesn't even make money. Now right. you got this other thing you have to manage. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like in that instance, buy another uh, business vehicle. Right. Buy another van that you can go put a butt in, right. get some more work, mm -hmm. and then that can make you money. Right. So like always buy assets. Yeah. And think about which, which, like, yeah, you could have a plumbing business. You could grow it to four guys, and it can spit out, you know, $400,000 a year for you. Mm -hmm. But if you just add a few more guys to that, it can spit out a million dollars a year for right. you. So <clears throat> rather than going and buying rentals that don't make you any income at the moment. Yeah, sure, of course. Create something that makes cash. Yeah. Like focus on cash, bringing in more cash all the time. Mm. Um, the problem is like guys start making money and they listen to their accountant or their mm. bookkeeper. Sure. Accountants are stupid. <laughs> Like, I'm just going to flat Jared. out say it. Like, <laughs> it's not that they're stupid. They're smart people, but they're stupid when it comes to understanding your business sure, and understanding your goals, right? They think of everything mm. through the lens of how do we, how do we record these numbers properly sure. and get this tax burden down at the end of the year? Yeah, you don't. Yeah, I think maybe the danger is looking at that accountant for specific business numbers advice. Ask that account for accounting advice. Make your own decisions on business advice. Yeah. Yeah. Within that, like, what's like a specific example of something <clears throat> within that genre? I'll give you one. My accountant, for instance, my CPA did my taxes in 20, I don't even know what year it is. Mm -hmm. It's 2024. Mm -hmm. So my 2022 taxes, mm -hmm. no, my 2021 taxes, mm -hmm. um, very knowledgeable accountant. Mm -hmm. I bought a bunch of vans that year. He called me and he said, hey, so um, I got your taxes done. You're going <clears> to <throat> owe so much money. It's like 60, 70,000. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, can we depreciate more? He goes, yeah, but you don't want to do that because you're going to, you know, if you continue to have income next year, you're going to need that depreciation, depreciation on right. next year. And I said, no, I want to depreciate it all, 100%. Mm -hmm. Will that get rid of my tax bill? He said, yeah, it'll knock it down to zero. Mm. I said, yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. um, and he goes, well, then what are you going to do next year? Like, you're going to need depreciation because if you make more money next year, your tax bill is going to be bigger. And if you stretch this out over a five-year term, sure. it actually has a larger effect on your tax bill over the next five years. Yeah. <clears throat> and I said, look, I don't care about my tax bill four years from now. I need the cash right now to grow my business more. Right. If I need more depreciation next year, I'll go buy some more junk, <laughs> right? <laughs> sure. So th so he was thinking of my business one way, yeah. and I was thinking of it a different way. Yeah. And had I just let him do that, he would have taken out 60K from my bank account to pay the tax man mm -hmm. that I actually ended up, that I actually really needed at that time yeah. in order to continue to grow my business. Yeah. 
So we knocked out the tax bill th- that year. The very next year, I knocked it out again. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> because I knew my plan was to yeah. continue to grow the business, right? Yeah. So you have to understand how it works. Mm-hmm. You can ask your CPA intelligent questions, mm-hmm. but ultimately you need to make your own business decisions. And it's yeah. that way with every contractor mm-hmm. that you talk to. Mm-hmm. CPA, bookkeepers, um, marketing companies, mm-hmm. you name it. You got to make decisions for yourself. Yeah, I think that's a hard one to like grasp and understand because you want to lean on the experts that you hire. Yeah. And you don't want to <clears> have <throat> to like, how do you know like when you've understood the thing enough to feel confident that you're making the right choice? Like, how did you know, like, like how did you know that you were making the right call by going against what the CPA guy was saying? It seemed like the right call. Gotcha. <clears throat> I mean, that's the other thing. So let's make this number two. If you want to make more money in your plumbing business, start making decisions. Mm. <clears throat> so I could have mulled over that decision for a month. True. Mm. And that would have been the only decision I made that month. Mm-hmm. And it would have been the only progress I made that month. But instead, I went, hmm, this is probably the better decision. Okay, let's do this. And I moved on. Yeah. Whether or not it was the best decision or not. Sure. Right? Yeah. yeah. I, <clears throat> I could have sought sense. 10 more people's advice. I could have gone in for more meetings with my CPA. Mm-hmm. I could have watched hours of YouTube videos. Mm. Um, But at the end of the day, I made a decision. I moved on. I learned whether or not that was a good decision or a bad decision Mm -hmm. and then kept on going, right? Yeah, you didn't you didn't pause long enough to make sure that you had all the information so that you knew you were making an absolute bulletproof decision. You felt like you knew enough. You're like, yeah, this is good. Let's get on to the next thing. Yeah. And here's the thing. Early in your business, Mm -hmm. your decisions have very little weight to them. <laughs> true, true. You have you have very little to lose. Yeah. Right? Yeah, even like <clears throat> what if it's like in the face of like losing sixty thousand dollars? It's very little in the grand scheme of things. It's like all right? the money I got though. <clears throat> but it's still very like so what? You go back to where you were before you had it. Mm. I, I worked mean, so hard to get it though. Yeah, but you have a plumbing business now, right? <laughs> it's yeah. so much easier to get sixty K in the bank. Yeah. And like most of the guys when they're starting out, they don't have 60K in the bank. They got like 10K in the bank and, yeah. and they owe 5K in taxes and they're worried about getting, trying to get, buy rentals to get it depreciated, right? Mm. They're playing a silly game. <clears throat> um, or they're going, man, what if I make this wrong decision and I lose 10K? Like, and it seems like mm. a big deal. I get it. But like, I would always run myself through like, okay, worst case scenario, what happens? Sure okay, I go hop back in a van and I start making money again. Yeah. Or worst case scenario, I got to go work for somebody else. Mm-hmm. And it's not as bad. So mm-hmm. if you can think of your decisions as worst case scenario, mm-hmm. it kind of helps you make quicker decisions. The, <clears throat> the further along you get in your business, mm-hmm. that's, well, let's say this before I get there. In the beginning stages of your business, little decisions seem really big. Sure. I had a guy um, explain it like this to me one time. He's like, you're climbing a mountain. Mm. And I don't know if you've ever climbed a mountain, but when you do, Mm -hmm. you think you can see the top. Right. And it seems like a huge hurdle to get over. You're like, holy crap, that's so far away. Mm -hmm. And then you get up to the top of that one, and there's another... You're like, you're like, dang, that was a false peak. You're like, oh, that sucks. crap. Yeah. And it seems so huge to get to there, right? Mm-hmm. And then you get there. And then it just happens over and over again. Before you know it, you're at the top of a giant mountain, right? Right. Had you seen the giant mountain from the very bottom, mm. you'd have been like, no freaking way. Yeah. Um, and so business is really similar. And when you're making decisions, you're looking at, <clears throat> you're looking at this thing, this first hurdle this first like fake peak, right? That looks big to you, Mm. but in the grand scheme of things, it's actually super, super small. Mm -hmm. You might be at the bottom of the mountain looking at the first peak and it's 6,000 feet lower than the top, right? Um, And so you make a bigger deal out of it than it really is, Mm. okay? And you spend too much time and too much energy and Mm. too much effort focusing on this little tiny thing that in the grand scheme of things doesn't even matter. 
and you yeah, don't sure. and you don't even realize it. Yeah, it's a drop in a bucket. <clears throat> it's a drop in a bucket. Yeah. It's a There's something about an ocean. Drop in an ocean. Sure. Drop of water in an ocean. <laughs> I was thinking about a penny and an ocean for some reason. So, I got like a penny in an ocean. Okay, it's a new saying. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'll, nice. I'll put it I'll like I'll make a little social media thing and we'll put Joel Fagre. Yeah, it's like a penny in an ocean, Jared. <laughs> like a penny in an ocean. Yeah, man. Um, so just know, like, mm. most of your decisions at that time are very small decisions. They just sure. seem big to you. Yeah. But in and the grand scheme of things, they're small. Do you think they s- seem big because it's just unfamiliar territory? Like, you're working with way bigger numbers of money, and, like, yep. you feel there's all these consequences because of that. And it feels super risky mm. and it fe- because you've never been to the other side, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Now, like, imagine you climbed a mountain once, and you know all the peaks. Yeah. That first one seems like no big deal, right? Yeah, because you know exactly what it's going to feel like. You know yeah. what it's doing for you specifically. Yeah, imagine et cetera, et cetera. you've done that a couple hundred times now. Yeah. Now you know how to pace yourself. You know, yeah. you're in better yeah. physical condition. Yeah. You can breathe better. Mm-hmm. You know what kind of shoes to wear. Mm-hmm. You know what kind of clothing to bring. Yeah. Like, it becomes much easier to climb that mountain every right. single time. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, know that. The other thing is, as you grow your business, that changes, mm-hmm. right? Your decisions end up holding way more weight mm-hmm. once you have 16 families relying on you for mm-hmm. an income. Sure. Now your decision is weighed a lot more heavily. Sure, And yeah. business starts to slow down. And while you still need to be good, like you should still be good at making quick decisions then, Mm-hmm. But now you have all the past practice of making good decisions. Right. So hopefully you're much better at that point. Hmm. But <clears throat> yeah, if you want to make more money, make faster decisions. Yeah, especially in the beginning stage. <clears throat> yes, because you're probably playing a much smaller game than you think you are. Yeah. Like I even do it to this day. I'm playing a much smaller game than I think I am. Yeah. Here in 10 years, I'll be like, I can't believe I worried about that. Yeah. Can't believe yeah, I was I mean, having these things that I thought about. And it's really easy to get wrapped up in the moment and the cares of the day, the cares of the week, the cares of the month. <clears throat> it's really easy to get wrapped up in the worry. Yeah. It's yeah. really, and, yeah. mm-hmm. and you say in the moment and it's like, it's not just the moment. It's like, I mean, it is the moment, but it's like the little things that are going on. Yeah. It's like, if I were to watch my guys every single job, if I were to go in and look at it, it would drive mm-hmm. me insane. I would go nuts. Yeah, and you'd be like, want, you bid that yeah. for four and you took you three and we're only supposed to have $20 in materials and you used 40 and... Yeah, if we add this up over <clears> scale, <throat> it's going to equate this much money. You suck, you're uh, fired. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you look at the big picture, it goes pretty dang good, right? Is there room for improvement? Yes, mm-hmm. there always is. But if I was focused on the day-to-day, I'd go nuts. Yeah. I'd go insane. I'd be, mm-hmm. I would go make stupid decisions mm-hmm. is what I would do. Yeah, it's like you have to <clears throat> occupy the tension between like the day-to-day decisions and then the long-term decisions. Yep. And like understand what type of decision you're making and then moving at it quickly. Yep. Um, I think Alex Tramosi, I just watched like a bit of one of the videos he did and he's like, success looks like this. And he's going like upwards with his arm and there's yeah. like a graph. But then he said, but in there, there's tons of this happening, all these yeah. ups and downs. Uh-huh. And that's almost like month to month stuff. Like, oh, this month sales are down. Mm-hmm. And then like, well, by the end of the month, you're like, sales are back up. Mm-hmm. And then you did this little dip. And then, yeah. But you're still progressing on this thing. And if you get so caught into those monthly moments, which yep. demand your attention because there's things that you need to do, yep. but you forget the overall picture uh, sometimes it can be paralyzing yep. because you're just sitting there like, well, I don't want to mess. I don't want to do anything because it might break the whole thing. Yep. I got a prime example for you. Mm. Good. <sighs> Dude, I didn't drink enough water today. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I feel it in my throat. <sighs> Too much coffee, not enough water. Uh, hey, coffee's water though. Yeah, totally. Um, this month, sales were down all month. Mm. I was like, crap, dude. And call volumes down. Yeah. And I'm like, we're not going to hit our normal revenues this month. Yeah. And then the last three days, we've done over 100K in revenue. Just bam. <laughs> and then and then we hit our monthly revenue, right? Yeah, it's sure. Like, yeah, sure. So it, it, you just mm. got to remember, like, oh, work is coming in like this. Yeah. Money is made like this. Yeah. It's the long-term game. It's not the short-term. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's scary because like you can imagine like you're getting to the end of the month and again, yeah, it's one month, right? Yeah, and so but, even if you were down one month, <clears throat> it still doesn't necessarily demand this drastic pivot. No. But like in your mind, you're like, holy crap. Because what you do in your mind is you play it out the rest of the year and you're like, if it keeps going like this, we're screwed. Everything's yeah. going to just burn to the ground. Yep. Like we got to like, I got to start yelling at people. I got to start doing crazy stuff. We got to change the whole business model. Yeah, <laughs> everything's broken. And like yeah. you just start to panic. And it's funny because what happened in your experience is then, you know, it actually turned out to be okay. Dude, it turned out to be great. Yeah. This is probably going to be one of our better Januaries ever. That's hilarious. I, here's <laughs> the funny hilarious. thing. You want to know something funny? Hmm. Same thing happened in December. Guess mm. what? We had a record December. Like mm. the very last two weeks of December, like we had a, just a few really good days. Yeah. <clears throat> and it pulled it together. Yeah. I feel like that there's, there's, um, I mean, there's such wisdom and patience. Yeah. It, dude, it's, cause, cause it's always like this tension because sometimes you have to act on something. And the wisdom is just waiting because you might not actually need to do anything. And it's hard to, and I guess just experience is what sort of teaches you that. True. It is. It's experience. It's it's having faith in the system. Sure. Gaining a trust in the the things that you've put in place yeah. and watching it work over and, oh. over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Um, that's the only reason I don't go insane today. <laughs> because I've watched it work enough you times. Do, yeah. You're also the you also do like to watch and to look at things. And I, so if you didn't have faith in that system, then you'd probably be much more meddlesome and tinker in and I'd go insane, dude. Yeah. If you didn't have faith in the system and you were just seeing the money coming in, money going out, money coming in. Yeah. With no real oh yeah, this is actually what it does. Yep. And I guess like if you guys don't understand the system, then you have nothing to have faith in. You have nothing to have faith in. It's just, you just literally have why well, hope this works. Yes. Like if you don't understand what's actually happening in your business. Yes. Which leads, let's go to number three with that. Okay. Quit changing things every single day. <laughs> Come on, it didn't work yesterday. <clears throat> <laughs> like what's a yeah. common thing that gets changed every single day in your experience? So this is kind of a, this has been a new lesson for me because in my plumbing business, I was I was really good at going... This is where we're going. Mm. This is the plan to get us there. Mm. And we put things in place and they stayed that way. Mm -hmm. But with everything I've done since then, we're like, that's not working. Let's, it didn't work for two days. Let's change it. Mm -hmm. um, and I see people do it in their plumbing business as well. Mm. They're like, yeah, true, true, true. <clears throat> they go through our hourly rate calculator and they're like, oh, this is working. And then the next week they're like, can't make a sale. And they're like, this isn't working. I'm lowering my prices. It's going right back to I'm where changing I was. my entire price book. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, yeah, dude. Yeah. Like it's only been a couple days. Yeah. Um well, it's been a week. <laughs> yeah. I'm not been, making any money. It's been a week. I'm dying. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, don't reinvent the wheel when you have a dip in business. Yeah. Like take a step back, look at what you're doing, mm -hmm. understand everything, and don't constantly be changing it. And like, remind yourself, like, if you made intentional changes, like, remind yourself why you made those changes in the first place. Yeah. And like, you also have to run the test in your head, like, about pricing specifically. Like, okay, well, if I don't do this, what's going to happen to my business? Yeah. Oh, my business is going to fail. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Like, okay. which is very, like, that was your experience when you raised your price at a certain point where you're like, well, if I don't do this, I'm just going to run out of money. Well, yeah. I mean, eventually it got to a point where it was, if I don't do this, if I don't raise my prices, all these families are going to go hungry. Yeah. Or all these guys are going to have to go find jobs somewhere else. Yeah. And I'm going to go hungry and I'm going to be stuck with all of these vehicle debt. And <laughs> yeah. this isn't a good road to go down. Yeah. So I need to change something. Yeah. But if you're changing like every single day, you're like doing stuff different or every week you're changing mm -hmm. stuff. You never have enough time to know if something is working or not. Yeah, because things take time. And unfortunately, things take more time than you want them to. Yes, they do. You want to have an input <clears throat> and get an immediate output yep. so that you can verify that you did the right thing. Yep. And I think this is why, like, coming back to even point one, like, talking about health. Yep. Like, and I was talking to um, our sales guy, Benton, about this. Like, yep. Getting our health in check, getting those routines in. It's like, it's the most important thing, but it's the last thing we consider because it's the thing that requires consistency to yep. actually receive an output. Yep. But the output you receive from caring about your health is exponential. Yep. You just have to give it time and consistency. Yep. 
And that's like many of these principles is like time and consistency are are huge. You want to know the fourth secret to making money in your plumbing business? Nah, I like, no, nah, I'm good. Be consistent. Oh, come on. <clears throat> yeah. Like stick with it. Don't quit. Mm. Like just never give up. Yeah, and that's funny because that's like such like a, that's such an obvious thing, right? When mm-hmm. people critique uh, New Year's resolutions, mm-hmm. the critique is, well, nobody ever does it for long. It's just, yeah. it's just a fad. Mm-hmm. And so we all know that consistency is king. Yeah. And we all struggle with being consistent in anything we do. <laughs> yep. And it's funny because if we're thinking about like ways to improve our lives and our businesses, it's going to start with consistency. Has to. Like you have to do one thing and just keep doing it. Consistency. Like if you're constantly changing diets and constantly changing workouts, constantly shifting your price, constantly changing marketing companies, you're just like a chicken with your head cut off. Like nothing is going to get better. Nothing. You're just starting a hundred new projects. Over and over and over. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So so for you, like what has helped you stay consistent with the things that you've been consistent with? So for me, it was just wanting it bad enough to actually stick with it. Mm and figuring out what that is. Like, number one, why do I want it so bad? Any, like, you know me, it was really just to prove other people wrong. It was still (laughs) is, pretty much. It was really one of my main (laughs) motivators. Yeah. And now I just want to prove them more wrong. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're pulling back to that one. Yeah. Let's keep milking that one for all it's got. (laughs) Well, it motivates me. For some reason, it does. Um, I'm not competitive except for in that one way. Yeah. Like, you go play soccer with me or any team sport with me, not competitive at all. Yeah. Video games, whatever, not competitive. Yeah. Um, You doubt me, and I'm like, no, you know what? Screw you. Watch this. Yeah. Um, so if you ever want to get me to do something, just like show some doubt in one area and I will prove you wrong. Yeah. Um, who puts it, uh, I think it was Andy Elliott. Mm -hmm. One of the guys in my course showed me a reel of his. He was like, use that to motivate you. Yeah. Like he said, what did he say? Um, humiliate the people that doubted you. Mm. That's what I like. Mm -hmm. It's good. Yeah. This is a good one. Mm -hmm. So for me, like. You know, nobody thought, nobody, nobody in my childhood, nobody I knew until I was 35 years old mm. would have said, yeah, that guy yeah. <laughs> is going to have a million dollar, multi million dollar plumbing business. He's going to have a business in Florida that runs, or he's going to have a business in Alaska that runs without him while he lives in Florida. And he's going to start making social media videos mm-hmm. and have a podcast and a coaching program, nobody would have said that. Mm -mm. Nobody. No. Not a soul. Even when you were doing it, people were still confused. Yes. Like even when you're building your plumbing business, it was still like, nah. I don't know what that guy's doing, but (laughs) what is he definitely not going to work. Yeah. Oh, and tons of people doubted me in that too. Um, I mean, people are still confused. They're still confused. They still doubt it too. Yeah. They still doubt that it's going to continue to work. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to prove you wrong. Like, okay, keep doubting, please, actually. Yeah. It's my fuel. So the more you doubt, the better, actually. <clears throat> yeah. Like, uh, I was going to get my vans all refinanced in the mm-hmm. middle of when we were moving down here. Because mm-hmm. um, they're all, like, I've got some financed with Mercedes, and I've got mm-hmm. some financed with, like, BMO, and some financed with some other company. Sure. There's, like, three or four different companies that we had to get financing through just to get the vans, right? Mm-hmm. Mercedes quit wanting to finance me because we had too much debt with them. Yep. And so we had to move to somebody else. And the business was doing really, really well. We, we were making money. And I went to one of the local banks in Fairbanks, Alaska, and we were sitting down and they were going to refinance all our vans and lump them into one mm-hmm. payment and one loan. They get some paid off in the next few years. It was going to lower my payment by quite a bit. <clears throat> Um, and just make it way easier, streamline the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So we're we're like going through that process, and the lady calls me, and I was in Montana at the time, mm. <clears throat> and she was like, she asked me where, I, I said something like, yeah, sorry, I didn't get your call. I'm in Montana. I'm in a different time zone. She's like, oh, what are you doing in Montana? And I said, oh, I'm just hanging out here for a month until I figure out where I want to move to. Mm-hmm. She's like, you're moving. I was like, yeah. <clears throat> She's like, this is, we can't finance you if you're moving. And I said, why not? Mm-hmm. She goes, your business isn't going to work without you. 
Mm. It's going to fail. Competitors are going to come steal your well, it's employees. Funny. It's funny that the bank lady said that. Yeah. Well, I get it. They're, you know, they're yeah, yeah, risking sure. their, their necks loaning me money. Um, <clears throat> but she was very doubtful. Yeah. And I said, okay, that's, that's your prerogative. It's, it's your money. I mean, I'm not going to fault yeah. you for that. And I told her, but it's, I'm going to make this work. Just watch. Mm-hmm. And she said, uh, I don't remember what she said to that, but I've thought about calling her. <laughs> did, she, did she loan you the money or no? No, she didn't. Um, no, it wouldn't do it. So I still got loans all over the place. Yeah. I <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Um, gotcha. Because I was like, well, that was kind of a pain in the butt for very little result. Yeah. Um, and I was worried, like, okay, now I'm going to go to another bank and be like, no, I actually live in Florida. And they're gonna be like, and be how like, long Ooh. have you done that? Yeah. Be like, oh, it's been like a couple months. And they're like, oh, nope. But now it's been like two years. Mm-hmm. Or a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Dude, we're coming up on almost two, two years. Almost two years. Here, Probably like real, real close to Here in a couple months. Years. What are we in, January still? Almost February? Yeah. Here in a couple months. It'll be almost, It'll be two years, right? Yeah. I want to call her up and be like, hey, um, are you ready to loan me that money yet? <laughs> <laughs> but... I probably won't. <laughs> no, you probably won't. It'd be <clears> but too- it has motivated me to keep yeah. that sucker going and keep it running well. Yeah. Um, so... In order to like stay focused and not quit, right? Mm. Um, find the things that motivate you. Mm-hmm. Find what you want and the reasons that you want it, and write them suckers down so that you never forget it. Mm. So this is something that kept me going very, very well. Was I started journaling? As dumb as it sounds, mm-hmm. as girly as it sounds, mm-hmm. it really helped me out. So I would. And I still do it to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, I set a goal of I want to make a million dollars. And I would write that down every single day. I make a million dollars a year. Mm-hmm. And then I would write down <clears throat> the things that I needed to work on in my plumbing business in order to get there. Mm. Right. And so I, I would pick like the next few things I need to do. And I would write those yeah. down. And I would write down what I'm going to do today to get me closer to those next few things. Mm-hmm. And I would make sure and get those things done today. And I've done that for quite a few years now. Yeah. And if you, from the outside, it looks like I had immediate success sure. to a lot of people. But the reality is it was, it's been years of like me picking away at it and working yeah. at it and getting better at it. And it just goes, you know, it's not a, I'm going to say it's not like this. I'm going to say when you start out because of the learning curve, yeah, you're sure. barely trucking along, and then one day you get that, and then it starts to be more linear. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> yeah, and still, even in there, there's still the little dips. Yeah. Little dips of momentary failures followed by yeah. momentary successes that result in the net positive and so on and so forth. Yeah. Like so that's the, that's the path. Yeah. If you ask, like, any of my friends in Fairbanks, Alaska, they'll be like, yeah, like, Jared just started his business and it just took off one day. Like, yeah. And then he left. Yeah. But if you, if you knew me for a long time, like you look back on it, it was like 2016, Mm. I started my first business and then I dabbled in another business and then I went back Mm. to work and then I started my business again. And you're, and meanwhile, you're still trying to figure out a business to start one, not even plumbing related necessarily. Just trying to figure things out. And the whole time I'm trying to figure out, what it is that I actually want. Yeah. Like, what do I even care about in life? And that's actually huge because I'll talk to guys who are like, I'm like, well, like, how's your plumbing business? And they're like, yeah, it's good. I'm like, yeah, it is. Like, yeah, I got like one truck doing a thing. And then I can tell that they're just not very motivated. And they're like, yeah, I'm just not like, I don't even really know what I want to do. Yeah. So I don't really have any desire to push on this thing. So for me, I was unsatisfied mm. with where I was at in life. Mm. And it wasn't that I was unsatisfied financially. It wasn't that I was unsatisfied with my marriage. It wasn't that I was unsatisfied with my kids or my possessions or my house or any of that. Right. I was unsatisfied with just what I was doing. Like there was no, mm. I had no purpose, right? Mm. Um, so it took me a long time to like discover what that purpose was. Right. Um, and I think once you can, and I hate saying that too, because sure, I think it's way overused. Like you got to find your purpose. And I would say, nah, 
I would tell, like, I would advise people to not even worry about their purpose. Mm. But to, I mean, I think I like the way Mike Rowe thinks about it. It's like, mm-hmm. follow your, what does he say? I don't know. Not your passion, but your <clears throat> opportunities. Yeah, actually. And actually, that's that's much more useful. Oh, yeah. Because, the okay, so sort of the problem with hard purpose-built language, in my estimation, is yeah. it can put you on a direction that actually doesn't make sense for you. Yeah, I mean, it's like if I were to follow my passions when I was a kid, I wanted to be a bum and <laughs> surf and skateboard and yeah. eat Subway sandwiches, right? Yeah. And that wouldn't have got me nowhere. Mm-hmm. And it wouldn't have, <laughs> wouldn't have stayed a very good passion, right? Yeah. What I think people need to do is f- instead of following their passion, follow their opportunities and find your passion within your opportunities. Yeah. Um, hmm. Don't go after one or the other. Go after both. Yeah. Because what happened for me is I'm not passionate about plumbing. Mm-hmm. I hate plumbing. Mm-hmm. I could care less about plumbing. I could care <laughs> mm-hmm. less about pipe. I could care less about fancy tools. Mm-hmm. I could care less about all of it, mm-hmm. every little bit of it. Um, but what I did is I pushed forward on the opportunity that I had to start a plumbing business. Mm-hmm. And what ended up happening is I found a passion for being in business. Right. I found a passion for business. Um, mm-hmm. and, and really in that, it wasn't even a passion for business. It right. was a passion for for building things, which if I sure. go back to my, Makes sense. if I go back like on the, on the history of my life, when I was a kid, I would go build tree forts. Right. I would tear apart things and build new things. You still build stuff. I was constantly building things. Mm-hmm. I like to like build things. Right. Mm-hmm. And so in going after my opportunity, mm. something I'm totally not passionate about, I ended right. up finding within there something that I really enjoy to do. Mm. Now I feel like I have a purpose. Yeah. Much better. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost like <clears throat> when you're young or when you just don't have a whole lot of experience with like a bunch of stuff. Yeah. If you just chase what you think your purpose is, yeah. You you don't even really know. Yeah. And like especially if you grow up in like certain like Christian circles, there's always like, well, your purpose needs to be identified like mm-hmm. that's your purpose, man. Mm-hmm. And typically in my experience what that comes down to is you're good at something and so that's almost labeled as your purpose. Yeah, what was that book, The Purpose Driven Life? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I never and I never read it, and like maybe it's a good book or whatever. Maybe it helps give direction. Like I think having it's, direction is important. Not. But the problem with like if you just lean into your purpose because you're good at a thing, yeah. then it's like maybe you just end up pigeonholing yourself into this one thing. Like, well, sorry, my purpose is to be a, you know, this – doesn't make any money. It doesn't really help anybody, but it's my purpose because it's always been, and that's, I guess, what God wants for me, so I'm just going to lean into that. And instead of, like, being open to opportunities that come, that, yeah. well, let me try this out. Let me try this out. And then the more you start to do that, you actually find, you're like, actually, this actually is really helpful. This is really fun. Um, like, yeah, like, this is fun, but this is also helpful. Yeah. Like, like even, like, for me, like, building good businesses with good cultures that are helping people become better people yeah. has helped me understand that like, oh, local businesses are the things that can change communities. Yep. And like, if you want to change communities, it's not really through politics. It's not really through who you vote for. It's like, what impact can you have on people closest to you? Well, yep. actually first it starts with, what can you do to change yourself to more reflect something that you, I something that you, uh, the word I wanna say is idealize, but that's not <laughs> a real word. Something that you really admire. Right. And then just make a community where that's the goal. And then you can help actually that community. Yep. And you would never know that if you didn't really start to do stuff. Like I would never discover that, like, oh day. Yep. Like I can help people have better businesses and better lives and have better opportunities for people that they know. Yep. Like that's that's I wouldn't have known that had I not done what I started to do here. Correct. See and if I never went and followed my opportunity, you wouldn't have had that opportunity. Right. It wouldn't have happened. Right. Like maybe you would have in a different avenue, but not with me. Yeah, not in this specific <clears throat> instance. No. Right. Yep. Yeah, so being open to, and I think my um, my sister told me this when I was younger, and I really appreciate it because like when I moved up to Alaska right away, um, it was actually my dad talking about my sister, and my dad said, hey, your sister has this really cool quality that she says yes to everything. Yeah. And we all know that saying yes to everything at scale doesn't work. Yeah. But when you're young, you got nothing going on. Like this guy was like, I got to Alaska. 
it's like the second week there, we're staying like with my dad's cousin or my cousin or something. Mm. And then his friend was over. He's like, hey, I'll pay you like 700 bucks a week to come and like help me with the sprinkler system on this airfield. Mm. And I was like, sure. I don't know what that means. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> yep. And then suddenly I was like, I guess I got a job real quick. And I just did two weeks of like doing something I never knew how to do, figuring it out. But it's just because the advice of like, you know, my dad reflecting on my sister's uh, knack to just be like, sure, I'll give it a whirl. Yep. But it just, that opened so many doors for me. And then I just kept sort of that idea up. Like, sure, I'll do that. I'll just keep doing that. Yep. And like, if you don't if you do not do those things, you don't discover things about yourself. True. And you can just sort of sit in one area <clears throat> forever. True. Okay. Mm -hmm. What number are we on? Dude, I think that was five. That was four. Was it four? I don't know. Let's we'll call it four. We'll call it four. This next one, five. Um, do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true fair um, fair so we covered not thinking about stuff but like just go do some cool stuff like mm. go try things don't be afraid to do things mm. Mm -hmm. um just like you were saying like you there's so much you can try and go like think about it and think ahead and plan and all this stuff but the majority of learning and getting better mm. and growing and then learning how to make more money goes from doing yeah like just go start your business yeah just get on the internet and get your business license mm -hmm. go buy a van go buy some tools go try and do some jobs go knock on some doors mm -hmm. like go do some crap yeah don't sit there and wait for stuff to happen to you go do it yeah yeah if you do that <laughs> it's the the perfect opportunity is never going to come along the perfect opportunity is never going to come along. And like at the same time, like when I started my business, like I made so many failures, right? Mm -hmm. And it was that I never would have made had I not tr just started doing crap. Mm -hmm. And the, the knowledge that I learned through those failures is what has gotten me to where I am today. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that's how it's going to continue to go for the future, right? Yep. Foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. I'm going to continue to try to do stuff and I'm going to continue to fail at it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to continue to learn and then I'm going to continue to get better. Mm. But if you never go do it, sure. if you never go try, if you never go fail, you'll never learn those lessons that are going to get you further ahead in life. Mm. And I know a lot of plumbing business owners are like, you know, I'm one, tr I'm one guy or I'm two guys or I got three guys. And I'm scared to like go do this. I'm scared to pull out of the truck. Um, mm. I'm scared to hire a general manager. I'm scared to hire a marketing company. Um, just go do crap, dude. Yeah. Just make stuff happen. You'll be much better off. Yeah. Like without action, there's really no, there's very little learning without action. Uh -huh. And like, I love that. There's a really long quote that somebody wrote, but it just goes through all these things that aren't actually doing the thing. Like, Getting, gaining research isn't doing the thing, no. right? Thinking about doing the thing isn't doing the thing. <clears throat> nope. Talking about doing the thing isn't doing the thing. Yep. Like you and I both know we can talk about going running tomorrow all day. We can all tell everybody day. we're going running. I'm not going. But Jared's definitely going, everybody. <laughs> but until we go running, we haven't actually done anything. Correct. And yeah, like the action is so important. And really like if you're, like action is required to understand the things we read about the thing. Yep. Like, let's put this into context, okay? Mm -hmm. And this will probably be better context for me, but you're training for a 100 miler. Mm -hmm. So right? are you. Maybe. <laughs> oh, you I'm not are. fully committed yet. You're committed. You just <clears throat> I don't, don't know, know if I can it pull yet. it off. Uh, it doesn't matter. You can pull it off. It's a good learning opportunity. Maybe, but yeah. I... Yeah. Think about how much you learn about yourself. <laughs> Gig. <laughs> so I, I've ran a 100 miler before, so mm -hmm. I can tell you all the things you're going to learn when yeah, you go, run, that, that, <laughs> when you go run your first 100 mean, miler. It's funny because to me, it means nothing. It means zero, right? Zero. And I know that. Like, you can tell me all, like, it's going to suck. It's going to be this. And I'm like, sure, bro. And and you have... Cool. No, but you don't even... You have no context to even understand how much it's going to suck. I have no right? idea. No clue. So, which is so, almost nice. And I'll just stupidly do it. Yeah, it's super nice. Um... <laughs> Or you, on the other hand, know <laughs> or me, the I know how hard it is, right? <laughs> yeah. And I know all the things. So, yeah. and here's the thing. You're going to train. You're going to do your best. You're going to get to that start day at the 100 mile mm -hmm. race. And you're going to be like, cool, I'm ready for this thing. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. and you're going to get in it. And you're going to learn 
a ton of valuable lessons mm -hmm. running that first hundred miler. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go, oh dang, mm -hmm. I actually gotta like eat. <laughs> yeah. Food is important in a hundred miler. And this actually go, hurts way more than I thought it would. Yeah, and you're gonna go, oh dang, this is so much more of a mental game than I even understood. Yeah. A lot of these lessons you're not even gonna learn until after you're done with the race. Yeah, and I reflect on it. And that. you reflect yeah. back on it. Okay. Yeah. But what's gonna happen is the next time you go to run a hundred miler, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a whole new way of looking at your training. Yeah. You're gonna have a whole new understanding of mm -hmm. what it actually takes to run a hundred miles mm -hmm. that you never, you literally cannot gain mm. without going and running a hundred milers. Yeah. Or a hundred miles. Because you don't have even the slightest perspective to understand it. Yep. Even if somebody were to tell you. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, and I mean, that's why you can consume content and learn all the things and read all the books, but still have no idea what you're talking about. Because mm -hmm. you, you, you don't. It's like people used to say, I heard people all the time and all the influencers on social media there, they're, most of them talk about mindset. Yeah. And I, and I always knew like, okay, mindset, mindset. I got to get my mind right. Yeah, yeah, whatever that means. I'm like, yeah. well, what does that even mean? I didn't even understand it until I got into business and I started progressing in business mm. and pushing forward and learning lessons. And then I started to understand, man, the way that I think about things makes a huge difference yeah. on my outcomes mm -hmm. and the way that I push forward. Like, I really got to work on this <laughs> mindset yeah, thing. Wait a second. That like, thing's, ah, yeah. now, I, now I understand what Tony Robbins was talking about. Now I understand what these guys are preaching. Um, and it's the same kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. Without the doing, yeah. you don't have the context to even learn the lessons. Mm -hmm. So you could spend your whole life trying to learn the lessons, but you're never going to do it unless you do. Yeah, that's why like, like if you're trying to understand how your plumbing business operates, but you're not implementing any of the things, uh -huh. that's why you will always be stuck. Yeah. Like you can never learn enough to have the perfect and right amount of knowledge to like, okay, now I'm going to go do it. Yeah. Right. Now that I've understood everything, now I'm just going to do it. Like you just got to jump in. You have to jump in. And then you'll, you'll realize, and obviously we're not saying don't learn anything, but at some point, like you have to do the thing. Yeah. <laughs> True. Like, or it doesn't make any sense <clears throat> or like yeah. go find a different thing to do. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Now I want to cover some, we've covered a lot of like, Slightly non-tactical things. Let's cover some more tactical things. Um, I always say there's only three ways that you can make money in your plumbing business, mm -hmm. right? You can. Mm, sure. The first one, you can charge more. Mm -hmm. You can do more work. Or you can become more efficient. Mm -hmm. So as always, on every single episode, it seems like we always talk about price. Yeah. So if you want to make more money in your plumbing business, one of the easiest things you can do, it's actually the easiest thing, mm -hmm. is just charge more. Mm. Just raise your hourly rate. Mm. Most, most, if you're new to this podcast, we talk about this a lot. Yeah. Um, and it's because it's one of the, it's the, one of the biggest failures in mm. plumbing businesses yeah. is they just don't charge enough. Yeah. Um, but even if you've already figured that out, if you haven't figured that out, go grab my playbook by all means, www.wealthyplumber.com slash playbook. You'll learn a lot in the playbook, but you also get an hourly rate calculator. In the calculator, you grab, you get a whole 45-minute video walking you through it. Mm. Um, that'll help you charge enough. But even for the guys who have done that, right. okay, who have gone through that and they get a number of 400, 450, 500, whatever mm -hmm. that calculator spits out and they're charging that, for those people even, mm -hmm. they can still pull that lever. Right, sure. They can still go, crap, I'm not getting enough work and I'm not super efficient. Mm -hmm. You can make up for those deficiencies mm -hmm. instantly by charging more. Mm -hmm. You can always pull that lever, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And when you're at somebody's house and you're too expensive, you can always go lower. Yeah, sure, but you, but can't, you, always can't, you can't always go up. You can't always go up. So it's better to start high than go low, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, I guess that's it. Charge more. It's a constant lever you can pull. Yeah, and I think 
you because people will object to that idea of charging more for all yep. sorts of reasons. Like that's nobody else is charging this, or even the ones that I've I've heard more recently is like, well, there's a shop in town that's 150 bucks an hour, and they're doing they're doing fine. Yeah, you know, like all these things in there. Um, but I like to like it's it's important to remember that that objection is just a limiting belief. Yep. Like it's just a limiting belief that you can't, you don't think you can charge that much because you don't think you can. Yep. It's actually not really based on anything except for just that idea. That's it. And especially when the amount you charge is dependent upon, like that's the thing that's going to make you more money at the end of the day. Yep. It's not how many jobs you get or the type of work you get or, yep. well, if I could just get more of this higher ticket job, then I would be able to make more money. Yep. Like in the long run, it's not going to work out how you think. Nope. Because you're just not covering the cost of doing business. Correct. Just flat out. Correct. And the idea that you can't charge more, you know, a lot of people think, well, like you said, you know, well, this guy down the street's charging 150 If I charge more, I'm not going to get any work. Right. He's yeah, going to sure. get all the work. Yeah. That's not necessarily true. Mm -hmm. um, everybody thinks... <clears throat> Actually, you'd be able to get more work because you'd be able to outmarket that guy. Mm. You'd be able to spend way more money on marketing mm -hmm. and way more money on providing a quality product to your customer, mm. making your higher price even more worth it, right? right. Um, also, a lot of people think, you know, I can't charge more because they just don't think people will pay it. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. Or they haven't gotten in front of the customers who could pay it. Even the customers yeah. right now, yeah. they, they can't take that price. Yeah. Yep. Mm. True. Um, but it can be done always. Yeah. Like in my experience, going from $140 an hour to $259 an hour to, you know, three, I think we're 394 to 425, went from 425 to 598. Mm -hmm. Every single time, nobody blinked an eye. Yeah. It didn't. It didn't change our numbers. To this day, I can still go back and look. Our conversion rates are identical. It's hmm. funny. Through all of the pricing changes. Yeah. It didn't matter. Mm. It didn't affect how many jobs we converted. We didn't lose a single yeah. a single job, right? Yeah, maybe we went to some jobs and we lost some customers that didn't want to pay our rates. That's fine. Yeah. We gained customers as well that are happy to pay our rates. Yeah. We've built a large customer base of people that love to use our service. Mm -hmm. um, and that it's one of the easiest levers to pull. I don't know why you wouldn't pull it. Yeah, probably just because you're afraid it won't work. Yeah. But it's one of those things where like the benefits far outweigh the risks. Definitely. Like the risks are insane. Uh -huh. Like the risks are you don't have a business or you have a really crappy business forever, which both yep. sound terrible. <clears throat> Correct. Actually, having a crappy business forever sounds worse than not having a business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, then I, I would rather not have a business. Yeah, because then you can go, then you can go get paid to not think so much and yep. probably have retirement and all that kind of stuff. Yep. But to just live long enough, paycheck, <coughs> paycheck to paycheck in your business. Yep. At that constant stress level, sucks. Like that sounds awful. Or even if you can make it, like think about this. Let's say you can make it mm -hmm. with a business charging 150 bucks an hour. Or let's say you could, right? You had a model where you could make money at 150 an hour, mm -hmm. or you have a model where you can make the same amount of money at 300 an hour. Mm. It's with 150 an hour, you have to do twice the amount of work, right. twice the amount of headache, twice the amount of risk mm. versus the other guy over here running this super simple, super mm. easy business model to make the same amount of money. Yeah. Which one would you pick? Oh, definitely the easier one. And people pick the hard one all the time. Yeah. They pick the hard one, and 99.9 times out of 100, mm -hmm. they're, they're not making as much money. They're not doing well, and business is really tough. Right. The only way, and let's just solve this question, the only way that the $150 an hour business model works mm -hmm. is... Dad started the company years ago. Right. And he built a company off 150 an hour when that was enough mm -hmm. to run a profitable company. Mm -hmm. It is no longer enough to run a mm, profitable definitely. company. It, he may even have started at like $90 an hour and it was yeah. plenty, right? 
Um, and so he's bought in all the vans. He's sure. put all the infrastructure in place. You have the office building. He's bought in a ton of equipment. And you inherit this business from dad, or maybe dad's still in it. He's been in it forever. Mm-hmm. And your overhead is super low because all your stuff is paid off. Right. Okay. And it's what cracks me up about this is like that person right there mm-hmm. could have 20 guys running around and still make a million dollars a year profit with his business. Right. With 20 guys running around. Mm-hmm. Okay. That guy right there could literally double his prices, go to 300 and make 2 million a year. Right. Like that. Yeah. And, why, and people probably wouldn't bat an eye. Nobody would bat an eye. I don't know why you wouldn't do that. Mm-hmm. The funny part about this this same guy right here, right, is they're not counting into effect the cost of having to replace their equipment. Yeah. So instead, when they have to replace equipment, they go buy it with their profit. Mm. They get tax deductions, right? Mm-hmm. And so it feels to them like there's not as big of a cost to buy new equipment. Right. But the reality is, is they're not as profitable as they think they are. Right. Okay. That's the only way that model works. Yeah. It's just incredibly low overhead <clears throat> because everything's paid off. Yes. If you're starting a new business, you don't have that luxury. Yeah. And like, if you want to like wait, like if you want to stack up cash to pay down everything each time, yeah. your growth is going to be so slow. If this guy wants to grow, it's going to be incredibly slow growth. Yeah. Because yeah, he's going to have to, okay, well, let's pay off this van. He'll have them. If he wants to grow and continue to do it, no debt, he'll have to spend all of his profits on growing, Mm -hmm. which if you have a million dollars in profit and you go buy, you go buy 10 vans. Okay. Now I got 30 employees. Right. Right. Um, You can start to grow quickly, but what would be way quicker for this guy is he could literally just charge more to the customer. Yeah. Factor in growth into his cost of doing business Mm -hmm. and he could grow exponentially every single year. Yeah. He could be buying 40, 50, 100 vans every year. Mm-hmm. But instead, he's st- stuck where he's at. Yeah, and like chances are this guy probably believes that his service is good. Yeah. And he probably believes that more people would be better off having a service than having somebody else's service. Yep. But he's shortchanging that vision by saying, well, I don't want to raise my price because typically it's because I don't want to be expensive because it doesn't feel good to my customer. Yep. But then the question is like, what about all the people who don't get your service because you are refusing to grow? Yeah. So it's like they're missing out on something that you believe is good. It'd be like, you know, if I had a bunch of food and I, you know, I like sharing it with you, but I can't get enough to share with all them. I wish they could have it though. Yep. I could get more, but I'm just not going to. And so what happens is that leaves a hole in the market for Mm -hmm. competition to start up a business and charge the customer what they need to charge in order to run a business yeah. and start stealing business, mm-hmm. even though they're more expensive. Well, yeah, because at the end of the day, like every every business, because there's there's more demand than there is plumbing companies, Yep. every business is going to drop something somewhere. Yep. And that's opportunity for another business to come and scoop it up. Yep. Typically, these guys that have 20 trucks charge 150 an hour, they're usually booked out. Yeah, like three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because, I mean, yeah, it's partly because of the business model and all sorts of stuff. Yep. So that same day customer, you can serve. Uh-huh. Yep. Okay. We lever two. Lever two. Um. Let's see, there's. You can do more work. Yeah. <clears throat> so you can always go spend more money on marketing, get more work, and do more work. Mm-hmm. It's a very easy way to make more money. Mm-hmm. If you're sitting there and you have four guys, and you're billing out, your income is capped. You add a fifth guy, fifth guy can bill out more revenue, make more money, mm-hmm. right? Um, you actually start to gain economy of scale pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. When you get to eight guys, you make even more money and on and on and on and on. Right. So you can always do more marketing, buy more vehicles, buy more tools, get more guys, do more revenue, make more profits. Mm-hmm. Very easy way to make more money. Mm. So rather than trying to, like, that's probably the second easiest. Mm-hmm. Um, Especially if you have a marketing agency that's a proper one that's doing all the things. Yeah, and you've got a good that's brand. That's up to step. Yep. you got a good brand. You provide a good service. You're doing all those precursors. Yep. Then it's a very easy move. Yep. Because it's just a phone call. Yeah. Go spend some email. more money on some more stuff. Yeah. Get more work. 
do more work, mm. make more money. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're this, that's one you especially want to pull if you have infrastructure and you're not making enough money, and you go look and you're not you're just actually not doing enough work. Yeah. It's the case for a lot of businesses. They're yeah, you're like, just not selling enough I hours. got four guys, I'm $400 an hour, and I'm not making any money. Well, how much work, how many hours are you guys billing out? Oh, we're billing out like two hours each per day. Mm. Okay, you need more work. Yeah. Okay. Um, the third one there is efficiency. And you can imagine like doing more work is easier is an easier lever to pull than mm. being more efficient. Yeah, for sure. Like flooding more jobs into your business is a slightly easier lever to pull than gaining efficiency. Yeah. What's funny is that mm. out of all three of these, most people start with the efficiency one. It is funny. Yeah. Well, cause it's, it's, <clears throat> it's the least, um, well, marketing is like the unknown thing. So guys don't pull that lever cause yep. they don't really understand it. Yep. Um, Raising prices. Or it's scary because you have to spend money. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's scary also because it's unknown, right? Because they don't know how it works. So then it's, it's, it's like a weird lever. <clears throat> and then pricing is just scary. So they don't do it because they don't think it's possible. Yep. So then you pivot to the least leverage thing, which is sales. Yep. Because you're like, well, if I can just sell better. If I can just get sales training. And yep. then like, and then that's when you invest in lots and lots of different sales trainings, which can be really pricey. Yep. And like, even if they work, like the efficiency that you'll get is probably not like we went from 55% efficiency to like 85. It's not going like, to happen. It's probably gonna like, yeah, maybe you went from like, maybe some guys go from 55 to like 60, some guys. Yeah. But now you're down to training people. Yep. And that's a different game. That's a, a slow whole, game. It's a whole different game. So let's talk about efficiency though, because there's some easier efficiency levers to pull, mm, right? Very true. So, yeah. Like it's funny because guys go to sales training first, missing these other levers, which would be way easier. Way easier. So. Software is a big efficiency lever that you can pull. Mm. Get some good software. Get on Service Titan. Mm-hmm. Start running start running your business in an orderly fashion. Right. Right. So get on Service Titan and use it like it's supposed to be used. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't <laughs> don't break it with your own spreadsheets and yeah. try to work around it. Yeah. And then on top of that, just developing a process of how you actually do things so that everybody knows this is how we do it. And then you can measure and tweak your process mm-hmm. to become more efficient. Mm-hmm. That's a very easy way to increase efficiency. Okay. Um, and that just takes looking at your business and going, okay, how do we go about doing this thing? Mm-hmm. Writing it down, training your team on, this is how we do it. Go. Mm, yep. And then watching what happens and then going, mm, they would be better if we did it this way instead. Right. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, very easy way to increase efficiency. The next thing you can do is, like you have software now let's actually like use that software to the best of our ability. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with service Titan, you can build in a price book. Okay, Mm -hmm. man, efficiency just went up. You can also pre-build options for your guys. Mm -hmm. So can I take work that they would normally have to do and streamline it somehow? Yeah. Right. So can I automate things? Mm -hmm. Can I use AI somewhere? Um, Can I pre-build things so that, can we have templates, those kinds of things, Mm -hmm. so that we don't have to do the work every time, but most of the work is already done. Right. And we just have to tweak it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay? Huge. Mm. With options, um, if you can train your guys on a service call process and get them just offering, Mm -hmm. if you just start with just three options, you'll be amazed at the difference that that makes. Right. And when you're thinking about options, a lot of guys get stuck because you can think of it as like good, like repair, replace, upgrade. Those mm-hmm. are good options. But ultimately, when you're at somebody's house, if you think about it as, you know, fix the, fix the symptom, um, fix the root cause of the problem, or give them a long-term solution, mm-hmm. that's a good way to think about it. Mm-hmm. But you also got to remember that people... Like people don't want to spend money on plumbing, right? Mm-hmm. So it's not the plumbing fix that is worth the money that you're going to charge them. Right. It's the it's the quality, the man. I put this really good to my general manager, and I just forgot it. It was like, dang, because we're working on building, like yeah. beefing up our options quality. It's like when you can sell somebody safety, sure, yeah, reliability, yeah. Um, those are the things like, hey, 
I can come into your house mm. and I can snake your drain. I'm right. trying to think of something plumbers can relate to. Mm-hmm. My mind always goes to heating for some reason. Yeah. Um, and I can snake your drain. Or I can snake your drain and camera it and tell you what's wrong with it. Mm-hmm. And if I find something wrong with it, I can give you an option to replace a portion of it or I can give you an option to place replace the whole thing. And you're, what you're selling is reliability there, yeah. right? Hey, you're tired of your drain backing up. How about we make this thing more reliable? Yeah. People will pay you good money for reliability. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're not selling the solution necessarily. You're selling the outcome. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And you can think of that like, let's say I sell somebody a hot water heater, okay? Mm-hmm. I can sell them just a hot water heater with a regular old one-year warranty, mm-hmm. Or I can sell them a hot water heater with a membership and an extended warranty that they don't have to think about. Mm-hmm. And they're buying the reliability. Mm. They're buying the, the I don't have to worry about this anymore. Right. Yeah, that's my, that's very important. That's what they want. Yeah. And so when you build your options to include safety and reliability and those sorts of things in your options, you're going to make way more money. Yeah. Um, because that's what customers want. Yeah, and if you... And if you never give them the the option, they'll uh, never yeah. buy it. Yeah, and that's right? and that's huge. And that's why, you know, I've talked to guys and they sort of poo-poo options because it's like salesy or whatever and all that stuff. But it's like the whole thing is like you want to give as many ideas for the customer to figure out how they want to get out of their current situation into their desired situation. Yeah. And they have no idea. That's why they called you. They have no idea. And I watched Tommy Mello on Ryan Pineda's podcast and he just put this like, so awesome. He said, he said, I think it's okay to assume we can sell people what they want and it's not ripping them off. Yeah. And Ryan is <laughs> yeah. like, what do you mean? He goes, well, a lot of technicians don't want to sell people anything but what they need. Right. And they want to be the ones to decide what they need. Right. Yeah, based upon, yeah, what and they he, would want. And he goes, so I asked my technicians, everybody pull your phone out of your pocket. I say, who's got a new iPhone? Yeah. Who went out and bought the new iPhone? And like six guys will raise their hands. He goes, did you need that stupid thing? And they're like, uh, no. <laughs> right. You bought it because you wanted yeah, it. Yeah, 100%. Did, did, I, did 100%. Apple rip you off? No. no, absolutely not. Would they have sold you an iPhone if it wasn't an option? No. Right. So it's okay to sell people what they want. So if you really want to serve your customer, you should be giving them, here's a basic repair Here's a mid-tier repair. Right. Here's a more extensive repair. Here's one with an extended warranty. Which one do you want? Right. Like, what do you want to, which one do you want to do? Yeah. And it's that simple. It doesn't have to be salesy. No. It's just presenting the information of these are the possibilities. Which one do you want? Right. And let them pick. Yeah. If they want just the one they need, cool. If they want more reliability, cool. Yeah. Like if you're not selling them what they want, you're really not mm. doing them a very good service. And I think it drifts into the negative salesy connotations when <clears throat> this is, just, I don't know if this is true. This is just what I'm imagining, right? But yep. it's like, if you're not, if you're not set up to make money on any, on all options, yeah. then now there's an incentive to sell the unnecessary option, yep. right? To push, to lean towards the thing yep. instead of just being like, Hey customer, like, this is what I got for you, man. And of course you're always like, based upon what I would do, yep. this is what I would do yep. as far as like understanding your system. Um, but I mean, you'll make money if you just do the toilet flapper or if you do the, replace the whole toilet. Yep. Cause you're set up properly for that. Correct. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Okay. Last thing, if you want to make more money in your plumbing business, go download my free playbook because <laughs> there's lots of good info in it. Yeah. Uh, number one, keep watching this podcast, then go download or listening to this podcast. Uh-huh. Then go download this playbook. It's got a bunch of good info in it. Um, yeah. www.wealthyplumber.com slash playbook. Yeah, yeah. Or if you're watching on YouTube, the link is in the description down below. You're going to grab this playbook. All you got to do is enter in your email. We will email it to you straight away. I think there's like a five minute delay Mm -hmm. and it's probably going to go in your junk mail. I can't help that. Yeah, it's just what it is. The science of the way emails work, it's going to be in your junk or your spam. So go check it. Um, If you don't get it, then reach out to us and we'll just try to, we'll get it to you one way or another. We'll figure it out. We'll get you taken care of. You're going to have to enter in your email on the next page. You can enter, you can book a call with us. 
15 minute phone call. If you want help with your plumbing business, we have a coaching program. I don't even like to call it a coaching program because it's way cooler than any coaching program. We have a training program. That is a way better way to put it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Where you can come into our training program platform. We have tons of videos that you can walk through and learn from me step by step all the nitty gritty details that we don't have time to go over on this podcast. You get all the resources that I use in my plumbing business, all the spreadsheets, Google Docs, SOPs, everything you need just to plug and play into your plumbing business and be mm. successful. So if that's interesting to you, grab the playbook on the next page, book a call with us. We'll get the help, we'll get you the help you need. Thanks, Jared. Later, Holmes. See ya.